Kaito! Diamond and a wife. Blue Lock is an anime based around a group of soccer players that were handpicked by our evil psycho sports analyst Ego, who believes out of 300 teenagers, one of them will become the striker that Japan needs to finally win a World Cup. <laughs> Meet Asagi, our main character who wants to be like his idol striker, Noel, but he can never be better than him unless you become an egotistical striker like the great soccer players he idolizes. Or can he? It's the perfect question that this story attacks. Isagi got invited to the Blue Lock program after losing the finals that would have gotten him and his team into nationals. He lost the game because of passing and trusting his teammate and not being the striker he should be, according to our good friend Ego. He believes a true striker would take advantage of that moment and go upon himself and go out and score that goal instead of trusting someone else. The whole reason that Sagi is even in the Blue Lock program is to prove his worth as a soccer player and prove to himself that he can be the best striker, but the catch is, his career is on the line. See, the Blue Lock program is not free. It risked your whole life. Since it was greenlit by the soccer community in Japan that hosts the World Cup, if a person is eliminated from the Blue Lock program, their career in soccer is finished for life in Japan. They will never even touch the tip of the iceberg when it comes to competing at an international national stage. I love how much this show creates suspense and that feeling of stress you get when one of your characters might be on the verge of getting eliminated or even erased from the show completely. Call me crazy but that factor alone makes every blue lock game feel like you can be 100% invested into it and still feel like your time was worth it at the end of each episode. The show can easily get you hooked in the first two episodes. It starts out a little slow but honestly it picks up really quick. Once you get into the teams it's wraps. You're, you're, you're in there. You're there. You're at the Blue Lock program. You'll want to binge the hell out of the show. Each episode introduces a new character, philosophy, or even power to a sense that makes you want to know more. I know motherfuckers out there probably feeling like Golem from Lord of the Rings for another episode. I mean, sh there has only been five so far. I'm at the point where I might be there too. I want to see more people like Bachira. I know that man's on bad timing all the time. Little bro is always sleeping like he got shot with a sleep dart from Anna. And he looks like he could be the devil man's youngest kid when his monsters come out to play. Yeah, you heard me right. Monsters. This motherfucker has a whole WWE persona. I love that. This power system in this show is what I really, really found interesting. Each character has this special aura to them that determines when or how they can power up in the show to ascend. Our main character has one of these special auras. This dude literally turns into an instant decision maker on the field. He is a playmaker at heart and just lights up blue. He's literally the Dallas Fuel. The motherfucker literally turns Super Saiyan blue and doesn't even look back. This dude is a monster on the field. The best part about the system is that it's all imaginary. Feelings are what's being betrayed to us through these sick ass moves and animation, but in reality, Reality, like I said, it's just the character's raw emotions. It's not like they're battling using JoJo stands, dropping a f***ing cement truck on you, but rather their heart and passion for a game that they love. I think that is amazing in sports anime. It's literally what makes people sports fans. I mean, f dude, I'm a show for the Yankees and the motherfuckers destroyed me this season. I know it has nothing to do with soccer, but it's what gets you invested. That's the best part. I think an anime that has done this power system really well is Diamond No Ace. I know, especially when my boy gets up to bat, he's swinging for the fences. This dude is unstoppable, but I'm not gonna lie. I'll tip my cap to Blue Lock because it's on a whole nother level. I love how exaggerated all the characters are and how you can determine each other's personalities straight from their faces. I know this fucker would be my favorite character just because he seems a bit goofy, but I mean look at everyone else. I know there's a character for you out there. You got your eye candy, your femboys, your gritty dudes that have shark teeth for some reason, basic anime characters, and even that bald fuck. But at the heart of it, it's a show based around the people's perception of how the sports soccer should be played. Personally, I barely watch soccer. The only time I do is during the World Cup and that's probably because one, I'm American, and two, my Hispanic family love baseball more but the show teaches you so much about the sport and what should be going on in the field at all time it's nice it's a nice touch because at least if i don't know anything i can still get into this show because hey they're gonna teach me anyways like i said earlier the story revolves around their main character he struggles with figuring out if ego is the right path to success as a striker or becoming a team player the true way and number one can in his craft i love that this show constantly 
really challenges both the main character and supporting cast through its blue lock minigame. These minigames make Ego seem to be this mega mind genius and how he explains how each game these people play introduce them to more fundamentals about the sport that will truly mold them into becoming the best they can. I love that. This story has Mamba mentality written all over it. It's win or lose. That That's the end of the story. The Ego is only there to craft the best striker so Japan could finally have a chance to win the World Cup and I love how they introduce other characters later in the story that are crown jewels of soccer in Japan. It reminds me a lot of Food Wars when you're introduced to the top 7 chefs at Soma School. I love stories that do this because it gives you little nuggets here and there that you could pick from and say oh damn maybe I should watch this week's episode to see if this character pops up again or maybe man I finished season 1 let's read it let's see where these characters come into play into the story. I love that. It's such a good way to expand your universe. Also, I love how this dude Ego is literally the sports version of L. Sooner or later, he's going to catch our main character eating rice and someone make a reason to why that rice bowl is the key to winning a match. I love that. This show has everything a sports fan would like. It goes deep into the mindset of a player and how some people actually think when it comes to sports. It's innovative and inspiring. There's a great dialogue between Team Z at the beginning of the show where they talk about Ego wants them to be the superstar striker that contributes to wins and is basically a superhero in the eyes of fans. Think of Messi, Ronaldo, but the big thing is they haven't won a World Cup. Who knows, maybe this year 2022 they will, but I love that the story is always rivaling our main antagonist in a sense, Ego. Even though he is not really our antagonist, he is the one we could pretty much blame for people getting kicked out. I think it's great because at the end of the day, these players that are playing the game will look at Ego like a god for training them to become a better soccer player or like a devil for not being able to compete at the highest stage but like i said it's that mom mentality this show is do or die it's win or lose it's crazy to have to wait another week for another episode i'm telling you i did not spoil a lot go out and watch a show right now it deserves its praise and attention need i say more cheers my friends shout out to jagger for suggesting the show okay so i thought it'd be interesting if i just rated all the dudes on team z or give you my honest opinions about them after watching five episodes this video is actually being recorded on 11 7 22 um you'll probably end up seeing 11 8 but i just want to give you my opinions on the cast of team z so far i think this motherfucker got some creepy eyes but he low-key gonna be op soon this guy's gonna have a moment where he opens his eyes for some reason and goes Super Saiyan. This dude is the man. He is the literal menace. My OG. He's the best. I love him. He's cute too. I don't give a fuck. The main character is cool. I think this guy's kind of a sweetheart. I mean, they share the steak because he's just nice like that. This guy, I don't really have an opinion on him. I guess it's just a pompadour. I mean, I, I think I've had this type of haircut before. Cannot find a picture. This guy, he reminds me like he would be in like Fruit Basket or something like that. This dude, his hair is nice, a little funky. Kind of like the style. I like this dude's hair more. He kind of reminds me of Ichigo Shadow Bleach. Man, I really, I really need to watch New Bleach season. But he looks like he's just Ichigo to be honest. Like they were like, hmm, we need to attract the Shonen fan base somehow. This dude's cute as fuck. I don't give. A fuck. Oh my god, wait, I can't swear. <laughs> Oh shoot. Oh well. This guy's cool. He just looks nice. I I don't really have much opinion. And why is there always just this like bald, almost bald dude that has to be the menace in all these shows, man? Like I can't be the only one that thinks that. Like come on, man.